Come on, buddy. Let's go. go let's go. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh shoot. Oh, shoot, shoot. All right, before we get started, I'd like to point out that Avicularia and Carabena tarantulas are generally adapted to a humid environment in the wild as they are native to the rainforests in South America. However, while they do require a certain level of humidity for their well-being, excessively high humidity without proper ventilation can be harmful. Stagnant air in an enclosure can potentially kill your avix. For these bioactive setups that we do, it is crucial to have good cross ventilation and airflow. The best way to do this is to have a fan blowing air towards the enclosures. This will help circulate air inside which helps remove the accumulation of carbon dioxide and promote fresh oxygen. In this build, I wanted to take a slice of the environment that the Carabana Versicolor is native to and put it in this acrylic enclosure that I have made. The tall towering trees, the lush green forest floor, and the vibrant flora, it's hard to capture it all, but we managed to make it work. This is Quinn, our freshly molted Carabana Versicolor, and as you can see, she has grown in size. She has grown so big and she actually just molted and I don't think this enclosure is a big enough space for her so I want to create an enclosure that will mimic her natural habitat. For this build, we will be using this DIY acrylic enclosure that I have made. It is 6 by 6 by 8 inches high and this is the perfect size for her until she reaches her adult size. It has a front opening panel and I put magnetic uh, safety locks on the side there and as you can see it's pretty neat but if you guys want a tutorial I'll be more than happy to make one it's awesome it's really not that hard the only annoying part is cutting the acrylic all right starting off with our drainage layer we will be using Lika for this build if you don't know what a drainage layer is, it's essentially a place where excess water can drain off in case you overwater your terrarium. And it's also a good place for beneficial bacteria to grow to ensure the long term health of your terrarium and plants. Now we're going to take this piece of mesh. This will serve as a barrier between our substrate and the drainage layer and it has tiny holes so that water can still pass through and drain off. I'm going to be using our own DIY substrate mix and I will put the list on the video but it will essentially help kickstart our plant's growth by providing the nutrients that it needs and yeah I'm just going to keep adding more dirt until I feel like it's nice and I'm just going to compress it, pack it down, add some more and what I want to do is I want to create this sense of depth so putting higher putting more soil on the back and sloping down to the front I think it's gonna look awesome so now we're gonna take this piece of cork bark I actually really like this cork bark because of the hollow tubes and our tarantula will love making a hide in there so I'm glad I found this I always do this <laughs> it won't fit inside Oh man, I always do this, like the last video, I should have put it in first before adding the substrate, so now I'm just gonna dig, just dig a hole so that this can sit on there, and yeah. Come on, please fit. I'm just gonna force this in, I hope it doesn't break anything. Yeah, I'm just gonna... So make sure it's positioned properly just the way I like it. I think it's going to look really, really awesome. So this is the final layout. I think I really like this. I just love how the orchid bark resembles random chunks of wood you see on the ground when you're in a forest. I think it's a really nice touch and the hollow tree looks like an entrance. Oh, it's so magical. I love it. I can't wait for what's to come. 
Now it's time to add our plants. So starting off, what's a forest without a lot of moss? So we're just going to add this moss that I got from my backyard. I made sure to thoroughly rinse it off so that no hitchhiked insects would be introduced to our terrarium and could potentially harm it. So I think it's going to be okay. Now I'm just going to add these moss randomly and hopefully it will look good. As you can see, I tried making a path towards the entrance of the hollow trunk. I think it's starting to come alive guys. I love it. I love it so much. So as always, we're going to be using pothos because they are great plants in a terrarium. They are fast growing even under low light conditions. They will still thrive. So we're going to be adding these to the background and hopefully we'll spice it even more. Next up we got another pothos but it's the enjoy variation. As you can see I really love pothos. I think they are great plants. They grow so fast and they have many different variations. And you can tell this one I actually was propagating this one as you can see with the roots. So I think I decided to put this in the terrarium instead of its own little pot. And I think this will grow really well in here. I'm just gonna make some space here in the background just gonna dig uh, the hole so we can plant this next plant and I think this one will really really tie up the background and make it look really nice and the next plant that we're gonna be adding is this terrace fern I think in this miniature terrarium the sense of scale it resembles bushes like tall shrubs so I think this is a great addition to the background and really close it up so I'm just gonna plant it right here uh, I'm kind of bending the leaves a little bit <laughs> I shouldn't be doing that it's kind of difficult trying to reach in there but I'll be doing my best so I'm just gonna fluff up the leaves and branches so to speak just so that it looks more fuller As you can see, I've added a bit more uh, substrate because our pothos in the background there uh, keeps falling down because it's not rooted properly as it is hard to reach at the back. So I'm just going to, I added a bit more substrate to hopefully support it so that it can stand on its own until it has rooted deep down and it can support its own. So yeah, I'm just going to keep doing that. Just finalizing everything and make it look really nice. I really love this fern guys, I really love it. It looks super super nice. So now I'm just going to put back the grass and hopefully just quickly detail it up. This plant right here is one of my favorites. I just love the red against the leaves. I really like that color and I already had a visual of where I'm going to put this. So I'm going to be putting it right next to the tree trunk right over here and I think it looks really nice and it really ties up the place and just where the entrance is it's like you just want to live in there. <laughs> it's so nice. I love it. All 
Alright, so the last plant that we're going to be adding is this Ficus Corsifolia, the mini oak leaf fig. And this is my all time favorite plant, and we're going to be adding this in every single bioactive terrarium aside from the arid species. But I just hope this one will grow along the tree trunk and just cover it with all these oak shaped leaves. It's a really great addition. Now to finally complete our bioactive terrarium, we're going to be adding these little white creatures. These are called springtails and they are great decomposers of any waste in the terrarium and they will turn all that food into needed nutrients actually for your plants so they will thrive. So this will be the final touch. Alright, the moment you've been waiting for, now is the time that we're going to be rehousing our Caravan of Versicolor, also named Quinn. And I hate to do this every time, I hate breaking their webs because it works so hard on it and I just came to wreck it. But you know what, that's for a better cause. Look at that enclosure that she's going to be upgrading into. That looks very cozy and very vibrant. Look at her now guys, she's so much- oh! oh. Oh, 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 okay, I'm gonna place you down. Look at how she walks, guys. It's so cute. It's so adorable. She's walking so slowly. You know, I better put a, put a cash cup on her. Let me find it real quick before she bolts off. I'm just gonna inch her forward because I don't have paper right now to go underneath. But. Hopefully slowly, just inch her forward. I'm gonna move this out of the way just so we have enough space. And oh, she's starting to walk towards it. I think she can see it. Oh, never mind. She's just climbing up. Okay. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Oh no no. Oh oh shoot. Oh, shoot. All right, take two. Hopefully she goes in. Please, come on. Oh, yay! Yes, she went in. Soon after I rehoused her, she actually explored her new enclosure and she went into her tree trunk. But she she went out, as you can see right now. But I want to leave her to settle. So before that, I want to just show you guys her amazing color. Unfortunately, you can't see the color because my phone won't focus. But I will get more shots in the next couple videos, hopefully. But anyways, as always, if you guys like this video, please consider subscribing as it will help me out. Give me a thumbs up as well. So until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.